you've made, how many millions would you say over the past five years or so? Yeah, over 20 million. Over 20 million. And before you knew it, I had my first six figure month yeah. and then I never looked back um, and I kept repeating it. This is a way of life that is actually super impactful. I am able to live the life I want with like no regrets, no guilt about it. I have now been celebrated as a unicorn. It's a hard truth, but it, it could be the thing that changes everything for you. Hi, Danielle. Arlen, what's <laughs> up? How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I am. I can never be as stylish as you. Oh. <laughs> uh, every time I've seen you, especially in person the last couple times, mm -hmm. you have just been boom, 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 boom. Aww. Tell me about the decision to Ooh. to be, to show up the way you show up. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you for asking. Um, I think it came from me wanting my outside to match my inside. Mm. So growing up, I definitely think people regarded me as, now, maybe some of these opinions were true, maybe not, but I believed that I came across as bland, boring, good girl, conservative, didn't curse, mm. um, you know, followed all the rules, all that. Um, my mom even worked in my high school. Um, and so I think as I got older, I continued that and yeah. then going into building this business it's like okay it was like the navy blue and the yellow it was like okay let's keep the conservative colors yeah. and let's and then finally i think it was maybe yeah around the time maybe it was around the time my relationship was ending but um as i worked with my stylist i would say that was like a key collaboration for me mm -hmm. um i think one point of inspiration was looking at how a a celebrity would be um i heard of a um someone who was building a clothing line yep. and so they decided okay for the month of november i'm gonna wear all nudes and i'm gonna wear all these fabrics mm -hmm. because i'm gonna be a walking uh vi like vision board for mm -hmm. myself so i took inspiration from that and i said well shoot like let me collab with my stylist germany she's like incredible yeah. um and i just create my little mood boards um, we just did a shoot for my new website and I haven't redone it in five years, but essentially we just made a whole storyline. So I'm like, okay, dress me as if we are going to another planet. Um, so I need an outfit to go in, in the, to the planet. Yeah. And then we need something like big, puffy, protective when we get out. Uh, then we need something to wear to the gala when we are going back to Brooklyn, because I was living in Brooklyn at the time, to bring everybody with us. Yeah. So I need something to wear that's This was like, like your storyboard of your exactly. inspiration mm -hmm. to wear. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And then, so, do you? Th how important do you think that is for founders, or is it certain types of founders to incorporate that, or is it just a simple personal decision? It's a personal decision yeah. for sure, yeah. yeah. I think um, for me, I just so happened to find that as a self-expression outlet yeah. um, to help round out everything else I was doing. But yeah, for others, um, having a uniform is just as inspiring yeah. this is as my wearing uniform. something different. Exactly, right. this is it. and like, it, that is just as inspiring, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my friend and uh, portfolio founder, um, Kim Lewis at Curl Mix, Oh, she yes. and I were talking. You know her, yes. yeah. She and I were talking, and I think she kind of brought, brought this up online recently, where she said that she books more deals, maybe with investors, maybe with uh, vendors, when she's wearing makeup versus when she's not. Really? And I notice the same thing. Even though I don't wear a lot of makeup, if I'm wearing makeup that day, people take me seriously. In fact, in elevators, men smile at me when they don't normally. Whoa! Like, like clockwork. Interesting. Yeah. So do you? Th so the question is, I'll ask her her take on it. But the question is, like, have you noticed that anything about how you express yourself changing with other people, how they deal with you in business? Ooh, that's good. So, hmm, it's interesting. I think that. So the short answer is no. Mm -hmm. If anything, but I think it's because I always had a threshold in which I would present myself in public. Yeah. And that comes from my upbringing. Uh, my mom ingrained in us. She's like, you're going to have an easier time if you easy on the eyes. I'll just oh, say that. Really? Like, she's very practical. She's from Panama. She's like, I'm not going to mince words. I'm yeah. not saying it's good or bad. Yeah, she's yeah. like, I'm just setting you girls up for success. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, she always presented herself in a way in public. So I think I always had a threshold for that. Mm. Um, if anything, what has shifted is when I see people who have been following me or have known me, they just say, wow, 
like they're just like okay now I feel like I'm seeing and experiencing yeah. more of you because it's like a it's a brightness mm-hmm. that is like you can feel it in the room from within you and then it does match when you're wearing these yes. different outfits what I will say though it's interesting when I think about um, maybe in more social settings, mm-hmm. but I would say that I'm mindful. So I started working on a fashion line uh, like a year a year ago. Um, not for me, at least not right now. Yeah. Okay, but well we started it. <laughs> and in when I was starting it, I remembered I was very mindful when I went to the meetings. It was a new sphere for me. I was working with someone who wasn't familiar with maybe who I was and the work I had done in the business mm. world. So I was mindful that as a petite woman, I want to make sure for one, I'm taking up more space. Mm. It just makes me feel good. So I would wear oversized, I noticed I wear oversized clothes, clothes when I went to those meetings. It would be my oversized jacket, it would be my oversized you know, pants. Um, and that was me giving myself the confidence, like take up space. Yeah. It's okay, yeah. even though this is a new sphere. That's super interesting. And yeah. I think I think the more we start to think about it and like piece together just on our own, I think the more things do uh, come together for a reason we don't even realize it sometimes but that's super interesting and you said you know in your business what you do what how do you describe what you do Ooh, um i would say i help people see themselves Mm -hmm. i help them develop a closeness with themselves in their story that is from a place of pride and confidence. And then I help them translate that story into a teachable framework so they can teach others Mm -hmm. who may have gone through the same hardships. Um, And then they can monetize it. So, you know, we use the format of an online course. Um, I'm known for helping people create and launch online courses. Uh, The more I do the work, I'm like, listen, you can use this for anything. The container just so happens to be an online course, but it really is going to change you just like I have, you know, over the years from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's how I would describe it, helping people build their online course empires. And when you say you're known for that in empires, so true, because... I mean, have you ever done a chart where you see who your clients have been and what they do now? I mean, you have so many people. The first person I think of is Tara Reid, right? She yeah. has openly said she is one of your customers, mm-hmm. like one of your clients, and she has apps without code. And I've known Tara since 2015 now. Oh, and wow. just seeing her go from, she was at an accelerator. I was looking to invest, you know, it was early on, so I didn't have any money, but I was looking to invest watch her go through that whole process of raising capital for her company go through the vc kind of world where she had to prove she didn't have to but you know they they said she had to prove herself Mm -hmm. etc and and she had a great company back then you know and then i saw her switch gears Mm -hmm. and i didn't know where it was coming from i didn't know she how she was being taught this but she there was something i would say 2018 maybe that shifted in her Mm -hmm. where i thought she has so much freedom And she has, even in the hard times, she's not going out there asking people for, you know, asking VCs for money. Mm. She's not in the same race that everybody's in. Therefore, she can do things differently. So how many students or customers or however you, clients, (laughs) would you say you've taught? Mm -hmm. And then what are, who are a couple that you can speak to that? that have been success stories. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm so grateful to call Tara a real, one of my really yes. good friends now. That's a benefit of, you know, what what you what we do. Um, uh, yeah, I would say so in terms of how many people I have taught our framework to, it's been about 250,000 live because I did my webinar live every week for uh, two years straight. Mm. Um, so about 250,000 have learned the methodology. We have over 10,000 students who have enrolled in Course from Scratch or Course Alchemy, our advanced program. Yeah. Um, and I can say that I know of personally a dozen who are multimillionaires uh, from their course, like their course has made multi-millions um i know there are more um Mm -hmm. i'll meet one every now and they're like yeah i was like i didn't know that's amazing um and i would say so a couple along the tech vein there's mandela um so founder jim you know the first i remember we first worked together she created a different course um and then she took that methodology and was able to build out the curriculum for that um and that's so impactful that founder jim yes I've spoken there, and I've met with so many of the of the founders. Oof. You're not just teaching people like a kind of a hack or a way of making some extra money. Like this is a way of life that is actually super impactful to countless other people. 
when they do it well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting to see people use it also to train their team internally. Hmm. So there's Gina um, at Mighty Networks, and she took Course from Scratch and Course Alchemy, and she used it to create their community building curriculum. I mean, Um, that's huge. Yeah. Mighty Networks. I use Mighty Networks. I'm a customer of theirs. Mm -hmm. It's a huge company, you know, and for... That's just it's amazing. <laughs> like that's amazing. What is what does that feel like? Oh, it's helpful to have others remind me of that. Mm. I forget. So you saying it and highlighting it means so much. Yeah. It's very easy to lose sight of it and forget yeah. my why. You're you're a king queen maker. Mm. There's a very specific type of lane. Um and and that's really special lane. It's a special lane. So it's great. We're going to talk about, I would love to talk about numbers with you, if you don't mind, because this is your first million, about the direct amount you've made. How, how, how many millions would you say over the past five years or so? Yeah, over 20 million. Over 20 million mm-hmm. that you've generated, right? Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, you have been able to enable so many people. If I think about Mandela alone, if I think about Tara alone, how many people they have helped, and um, that's important. I would I would say to you if you if you get a chance, I would do a chart. Hmm. I would or have some outside source do one to to map the different people who you've taught and what their impact has been. Hmm. Like a, a third party impact report might be really oh, interesting. I love that yeah yeah, yeah. Thank and you. and so what does that look like today? What is because you said you just filmed something? What does that look like now, in uh, in uh, in April? Oof. Uh, yeah. So I just I'm here in LA filming a uh, refilming course from scratch. Mm-hmm. So our signature program. Um, and it's really cool to bring this version of myself to the program and all the learnings we have. So we are still running that program. We're getting ready to relaunch it on uh, Member Up, which is a community and membership platform and course hosting platform um, that I'm a partner in that is like gorgeous. Um, I love the team. So that's a really exciting thing for yeah. me because I have been running uh, my course business for about seven years now. So to now be able to partner with um, this team that's like helping me breathe new life into it. Mm. Um, Um, So that's what's happening there. Uh, We are going to be, I think, putting more emphasis on our advanced program. Uh, I just did a poor job of letting people know, hey, like, did you know we have an advanced program where Mm -hmm. we can show you how to scale this to a million, how to automate it and delegate and all of that. Um, So I'm excited about that. And I think other than that, it is... um, I have a podcast that I uh, launched, so I just have season one that's yeah. kind of like halfway through. Yeah. Uh, so What's I think, it about? Yeah, so it's called Since 3000, and it is uh, what happens when we embody our past, present, and future selves now. Mm-hmm. Um, so based on my personal journey of realizing I live in the future, I'm an Aquarius, um, so I'll be in the future <laughs> on another planet, on another timeline, and that means I can forget to lean into the lessons of the past yeah. and also just be present and yeah. see like what's here right in front of me. Mm-hmm. So that was a way for me um, to help bring those lessons together, and everyone I interview, they're sharing all of their lessons um, from all kind. Con- yeah, so we talk about your inner child we Mm. talk about managing your nervous system um to relationships you know why are you going for these kind of uh, attracting these kind of people when you really want this kind how does that relate to your childhood Mm. and then the implications of that on your business (laughs) and your life and everything and you you can choose to we can skip this topic but you did mention there was an end of your relationship when you talk about like relationships with like how do you incorporate that today and yeah. Yeah. Is it is it something yeah. that you're like thinking totally. about? Oh my god. I'm, I'm a little bit of a matchmaker, so I kind of <gasps> on the oh, slide. Oh, you better not tell I'm me that. Slide, Why are you just now telling me this? <laughs> oh, we need to get on this like yesterday. Well, what are you looking I'm for? I'm so excited. What are you looking for? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so it's interesting. Okay. So one of my uh, tattoos I have right here, it's two parallel lines. Yeah. So I'm looking for my other one, right? One plus one equals 11. I'm looking for mm. someone who is also a shooting star and we are traveling in parallel, um, creating our own worlds. So someone who is very much in their masculine mm-hmm. in a sense of they wake up every morning with their dream is the number one thing. Like they want to penetrate the world with their dream and with their vision. Okay. Um, that's really important to me. Um, 
someone who does not take themselves or anything too seriously. Yo, life can get hard. Um, I am known to carry the weight of the world on my shoulders, even though it's not here for that, but I will carry it on my shoulders. You yes. didn't ask for it. So to have a partner who is really just light, like they are, um, they have a youthful spirit, endless curiosity, um, and they're just light. Yes. Their spirit is just light. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And can I, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Well, yes. Great communicator. So I'm quite, I, my mom is quite chatty and conversational, <laughs> so she raised me to be that way. So I love excavating people's thoughts and their ideas yeah. and, and just, you know, how was your day, but like going into the nitty gritty details to yeah. really like excavate, you know. So you're not like a... How was your day? And then you skip ahead. Oh, we gon' we gon' that one detail. Tell me about your meeting. Why did you feel that way? What are you gonna do next time? You know, like uh -huh. yeah. And I'm not gonna assume anything. I okay. think I know. But are you? Is, is it men? Is it women? Is it everything? Is it? Yes. Thank you for asking. Yes. Uh, men. Men. Mm -hmm. And so, have you had relationships with men where you find that they're talkative? Yes. Yes. So, oh, yes. Yeah, the so seven-year relationship I was in, yeah. he was very talkative. And is it a certain star sign that's that person? Because you spoke in those terms. That's interesting. Not necessarily. Or a certain I'm open. type of role they have, a certain industry they're in, something that kind of uh, yes. leads that way. Yeah. So we're gonna find you somebody. Oh, I love <laughs> this. Okay. Um. Yeah. In terms of so, just in terms of star sign, doesn't matter because everyone is in a different expression of their sign. So there are light expressions of your, you know, astrology and shadow expressions, yeah. and your it, de it depends on how evolved you are in those. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm like, it can be any sign. Just depends on where you are in your evolution. Yeah. Um. And where I am, and when we meet, and um. Oh, industry. Yeah. Most likely, they have an entrepreneurial spirit. I have most experience with people with entrepreneurial spirits yeah. um, who don't work a nine to five. However, at this point, um, I'll probably date someone who has been in their, if they're full time, yeah. they've been in their career for long enough where they're probably at a high enough level where they have time freedom, they have location freedom, they're traveling around, clients, meetings, whatever. Yeah. Um, you like somebody who travels, it has a, an agency of their own, of their yes. own life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, we just so happen to have an audience that's full of entrepreneurs and oh, um, uh, executives. And <laughs> so get in touch with me at Arlen at ArlenWasHere.com. Yeah. I will connect you. I will do the vetting. Oh so my we gosh! Always send you that way. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, that's cool. And so you, but you know what's really great is that you're open for that. Like you're, yes. you're not. Like I remember after like my last re relationship before my wife, I was done. I was like, no, oh, I don't wow. want it. You know. And then it would just so happen that that was you know I found the right person at the right time mm -hmm. but I think that that's going to serve you well and I hope that it does uh, so we'll, we'll, yes. we'll figure out what we can do about that thank you um, and so um, what is what are you thinking about now in terms of anything that's challenging because hmm. I you know people hear 20 million I know people are doing the math they're saying how much do I have to make in order to be able to apply for the boyfriend role <laughs> You know, but that's that doesn't come without its own challenges. Do you have anything that you're thinking through that, um, yeah, just kind of feels like a lot? Because I know people can relate to something. Absolutely. Yeah. I think one of the biggest challenges for me is I defined myself and my value commensurately with the health of my business. Yeah. And... When you are someone who is always moving the goalpost, um, who is raised to come home with the straight A's, have the B plus, and be like, wait, but what about the B plus? Like, let's improve that. I think that even if the business is thriving and doing really well, um, there will be a feeling of, but it's not good enough. Mm. And when that is internalized, um, for me, it became very crippling. Mm. So that's something. So. I have recently started to decouple myself from the business in terms of like my value being determined by it. Mm. Um, so that's a, that's been a big one. I think the second one is taking on other people's vision for you as your own, um, taking on other people's voices as your own. Um, and so around maybe like the, the $10 million mark, um, 
I started, honestly, the $1 million. I would say starting at the $1 million mark. I said, I've never seen this amount of money. Yeah. I ain't never heard of it. I don't have friends. Like, So at that point, I start doubting myself and I say, I'm afraid I'm gonna lose this and squander it. Like I need to hire mentors. So I think from that point forward, it was harder and harder for me to trust myself because it was new levels. Mm, and I'm like, terrain. Well, yeah. And I'm like, who? Of course I don't know what I'm doing. But it's like, girl, you do. Like you, you actually do. do. What makes you think they know better? Yes. So I would say, knowing what truly is important to you, because I ended up, I would say, like uh, hiring a bigger team than I needed. When I got into this to WFA work from anywhere, I got into this to have a lean team. I get into it to have everything automated, mm. but I found myself hiring too many people. Um, I found myself um, spending way too much on ads. Um, and what else? And then not doing the inner work to release. Like one of my things is I can say that I can be very hard on myself. Mm. And what that translates to is even though I hire a very capable person, I'm still be over their shoulder. Like, what yeah. you doing? What you, yep. what you, so even, even having the big team, like I'm still working a lot of hours, right? Though that was me a few years ago. So those were probably the, the most challenging moments. So I think the one thing I'm honing now is that voice piece. Listening um, to yourself, believing in yourself when you hear it. Yes. Trusting it. Yeah, and, and that's something, do you think that's something that someone at the one million necessarily or before it needs to know or should they go through a little bit and kind of learn it? Yeah, I mean, I think me enrolling in courses and in getting in, involved in masterminds, having yeah. mentors, huge. Like yeah. that is how I was able to collapse time. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool, you did it in four years, I'm gonna do it in two, done. And even same with my students, like they do the same thing. Yeah. So. I think absolutely do that. And while you're doing that, pay attention to um, this is their dream. So their dream is to live in the high rise in, Mid in Midtown Manhattan. Their dream is to, to drive the Lambo. Their dream is to you know do X, Y, Z mm. and say, now what is mine? Yes. And let me learn the skills from them, but let me make sure my subconscious isn't getting mixed up by the lifestyle that they're yeah. creating. You're not trying to be a mini me mm -hmm. of, the, of the person that you're learning from. Mm -hmm. You're trying to apply it or hopefully you can apply it. I do would love to talk about your first million on your first million. Yes. Because I think you in particular can be very helpful there. Can you first of all what what made that? What was it the same thing that made the 10 million? Was it from the same thing or was it mm. a different product? No, same product. So, I had one product course from scratch that mm -hmm. I grew from 0 to a million in 2 years. And majority of that million was made in the last six months of that two years. So it was truly like that. Yes. And it was made in a very, with a very simple model. So I did a weekly webinar um, live for nine months. Mm. Um, and I just built it little by little. So I would spend money on ads, do my live webinar, get some sales in. So, you know, spend uh, like $500 on ads, get a couple sales, make $3,000, yeah. reinvest that. And because I have a little tracker, um, my sales simulator, I just grew it, grew it. And then I love to leap. So I was like, what if we, instead of spending 500, spend 5,000 this week? And then I grew it to 10,000. Yeah. And before you knew it, I had my first six figure month yeah. and then I never looked back. Um, and I kept repeating it. Yeah. So for that first million, um, that was again, the last like, you know, six to nine months of it. For the first part of it, it was me doing, an, you know, we talk about MVP, most valuable or minimum viable product. I had a minimum viable course. Mm -hmm. So I just did my course live for the first month, tested it out, and then I was able to like record it and all of that. So I think it's important in the first phase of making that first million, still do what is the ugly rough draft version mm -hmm. of this business venture that doesn't require tech. What can, how can I do this? If it was the year 1520, <laughs> how would I do this? How would I, you know, sit on a rock pain somewhere point? under exactly tree. and talk to people? Yeah. It would be oral history, yeah. gather around the yeah. fire. I'm gonna teach you this framework, yeah. And you're gonna pay me in weeds or whatever you got. <laughs> um, but yeah, now you could pay in weed, I mean, and, or that <laughs> singular, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. That, so, this is key, right? So, mm -hmm. what, what, what's one thing you can remember? that you feel like you got wrong during that period? Because again, people are right now in that moment and they feel like, oh, I got that wrong, but there's still hope. Yep. How did you stumble in that moment? Absolutely. It was my self-reliance. So I am first generation and we are all about the DIY. Mm -hmm. So what I would have done differently is I would have enrolled some form of an accountability partner, whether it was 
but it would have been in the in the um, form of a hire. Mm. If it's a friend, it can work. If it's a a group of peers, it can work. But I would say, um, if you if you are open to it, hiring someone who can be your accountability partner. Yeah. So it could be like a project manager. If you want tech support, they can also do that. But that's one change I would have made because I spent about eight months of that first year after I launched the MVP, the Ugly Rough Draft, I then went into hiding in a cave because mm. I went into the self-doubt cave. And I'm like, yeah, I have testimonials from that launch, but it's still not good enough. Mm. So if I would have had someone with me and they said, all right, D, our goal is to hit 10K, 20K, here's how we're gonna get the sales. And they would show up every morning for a 15 minute stand up and say, these are the things we're doing today. Mm. How'd you get stuck yesterday? Let's talk through it. If I had that person, um, I, I, those eight months wouldn't have happened. What's that role, do you think? What do you think that's called? Because that sounds like a coach, but you're saying that's more internal. It could be a or coach. Or yeah. consultant. Yeah. You're right. So you could go externally, mm -hmm. and it could be a coach. It could be a business coach. Um, and Or internally, it could be an EA, an executive mm -hmm. assistant. It could be a virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for someone with tech background, it could be an OBM, uh, online business manager, mm -hmm. or it could be like what I have now as a chief of staff. Yes. Uh, if you're, you know, larger, you've Shout got other things going on. Shout out to the chiefs of staff. Yes. <laughs> yes. Would not be here without her. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so it would be any of those. Yeah. And I think it's key just to know what you require and yeah. what you need. Did you have like a splurge once you hit that second year and you realize I hit one million did you treat yourself in any way? So, no. Um, however, my partner at the time was really good at celebrating. Yeah. So I would say one thing we did is um, we would go on a sailing trip almost every year because he sails. Oh. So we did go on a sailing trip and I was able to, I treated my dad. So it was so special. Um, so brought him out on the trip and it was mostly his friends because he was in the ski club growing up. So. Um, or as I was growing up. So anyway, he came. It was a lot of his friends and some of our friends. But um, yeah, so it was a sailing trip. It was for a week. Wow. Um, we went to BVI. And I remember, you know, just being so proud that like, I was on my laptop only 45 minutes the whole time. <laughs> wow. Still made 40 grand. But Ooh. I was really proud of myself because I would be the one on the computer like, and they'd be like, Danielle, there's water. Yeah. But I really like relaxed and, and was like, wow, like my dad is here. This is dope. Yeah, I think it's pretty... I think it's amazing. I'm, we're talking. I'm glad we're talking about that first million because it's it's so important. But I, th I, I know that people are wondering. Well, how did you even get the first thousand? Because what was that background that told you that you could do this thing or gave you the inclination that you could? Yeah. So I, before even launching this business, I had already like worked in Silicon Valley and in tech and at startups. Um, because I landed at Berkeley for undergrad. So right time, right place for me. Mm -hmm. And so I had already um, worked in ad sales. So I was familiar with um, ads and how they worked on Facebook because that was my role day to day. And that was back in 2008 mm. <laughs> when Facebook just start, just rolled out their ad platform. Um, and then I, I left and co-founded a startup and we raised money. We raised almost 100,000, which yeah. I feel like today is like a few million back then. <laughs> that was a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we raised money. We did an accelerator program yeah. uh, in New York. And so I got that experience of building an MVP, of iterating, and also the vision then was similar now. Mm -hmm. um, how do we help people monetize their personal brands? And how do we bring these educators onto our platform? It was a, a content site. Yeah. And then we turned it into like a profile network for creatives. Um, so I've been doing like this same kind of work and had the same kind of mission for about 15 years. Mm. Um, I can make the argument going back further, but I'll just say formerly professionally since then yeah do you think let's say someone is has a company or a company idea and they're trying to raise money from angels from venture capitalists or investors and they're frustrated because they haven't been able to I tell them that they are in an enviable position because they still own 100% of their company what do you think now you've been on both sides of it is it do you do you have some clients for instance who um, can tell you which one was better, like raising a million dollars or making a million dollars, like which one's better in your opinion? I know my answer. Yes! <laughs> but speak to it because you have so many examples that you could speak to. You're so right. So I love that I've had um, experience on both sides. I will say that 
I was so set on this current business being a cash flow positive business. Like, how can we generate revenue from day one because of my experience raising money? Um, I didn't feel like we had agency to say mm -hmm. what features are we building next? What timeline are we operating on? And so with this company, it was really important to maintain ownership. Um, so I will say it has given me a lot of freedom to like grow as fast or as slow as I want. Yeah. Um, I am able to live the life I want with like no like regrets, no guilt about it because it is a hundred percent, you know, my money. Yeah. Um, and it can fund, you know, my life because it is a, a lifestyle business that happens to be a lot of money <laughs> um, yeah. that it's made. And what I will say though is um, when thinking about this membership platform that we have, Member Up, I mean, we did have that question. We mm. said, you know, we know we want to build this into something that can have an exit so we can continue to serve far more people that's beyond what we know we have you know the, the capacity to to serve and so i thought you know i asked that question you know well is it wise to raise money in order to get it to that mm. to that point um and we had a great discussion about it and i've talked to like a couple other friends yeah. and i really appreciate your input their input as well so like thank you for that you're welcome um and i will say that yeah now uh, seeing our skill set, um, the founders of Member Up, we are really good at making money. Yes, we already have a customer base. You know, I have an email list with half a million people. Um, combined with all of us, we have over a million people who we can send an email to and reach. So we are, able, and we have already generated revenue, um, and we barely even launched. So that, so now that I'm in this position, I'm like, you know. <laughs> I really like maintaining this ownership yes. and raising the money from the customers because that even proves that your company is actually solving a pain point. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And there's so, there's so much involved in taking on outside capital. And this is, I'm com this is someone who my job is to invest in people, but I have to say over and over and over again, that freedom that you have, not, it's not for everybody. But that freedom that you have, 80 to 90% of the people who come to me for capital could have an amazing life without taking any outside capital. And so what I love, let up, let me try that again. <laughs> so what I love about your story is that you are a shining example of that, but then you also teach people how to do that, right? Yes. I think that's really, really cool. Yeah, and I will say, when people who are listening, who are seeing the the allure of raising capital, I'll say I've been in the position where I would read the headlines mm. on all these blogs and I would think, but I want to be celebrated in the headlines and the only way to be celebrated is to raise the capital. Mm. Um, and I'll just say that I have now been celebrated as a unicorn by Afrotech for actually making the money. That's right. With no outside funding. That's right. So just to reassure them, you know, like you are going to be celebrated for the impact you make yeah. um, and you don't necessarily need the outside capital yeah. to do it. I am. Um, I've raised a few million dollars and invested, you know, and I'm still more proud to say and I make sure people hear me when I say I've generated millions. Mm. Like that's so much more important to me. Oof. I've generated millions of dollars. That's huge. And and there's, there's a there's a pride in that that so many people can do. It's not just for a few of us. You know, and I don't yes. think I would have I don't yeah, it's not celebrated the same way. And it should be. And it's as a VC, I'm part of the problem. But at the same time, I'm helping us like make up for a lot of lost time. So, you know, in, in the trenches there. But yeah, that's yes, very cool. And then, um, let me Can see. I say one more thing. Yes, on please. I think something I forgot is when you build. To keep in mind, when you build this business and you own 100% of it, when you decide you want to pivot you want to start a different business. You have a sellable asset that you own 100% of. And when you have generated the revenue, you have mm -hmm. generated the millions, mm -hmm. you add a multiplier to that and you can now sell that asset. Right. So I think, and when you sell it, you get 100% of it. That's right. So I think that's something we forget. That's something I forgot um, that I got to remind myself. Yeah, there's a dude named Arvin. I can't think of his last name, but he's a, he's a bootstrapper and he talks a lot on Twitter. Mm. And he said that he and his girlfriend, I think it was, um, they bootstrapped to 500,000, um, very simple. And a private equity fund came, came along, said we wanna plug this into another product that we own and they bought it on a multiple. 
Wow. And they said, yeah, let's do it because we can do this over and over and over yes. again. We're going to take a few weeks off and go, you know, hang out and then we'll do, maybe start something new. Yes. And how, how exciting is that? When you get on that, I don't want to turn people off completely from venture yeah, capital. Yeah, it, it has. Everything it is, has a, there, a use. There, Obviously, there's, a, there's wealth to be made and we need to do that. But for the 80% of the people who feel so sad about where they are in terms of investors, don't let a dozen investors like bring you down. Yes. Turn that into something. Turn that into your own thing. And again, like who who's keeping score? Like if you can make two hundred thousand dollars a year, and like that's your money mm -hmm. from doing something that you wanted to do, that you own, that you don't have an answer to anybody but your customers. Yeah. That can be much better than making two million where your profit margins are negligible and you gotta and the the VC who invested in you is like, where's the twenty? Yeah, because I need a multiple on my investment, you know. Uh, so there's just there's I'm just saying there's a lot of pros to change in to change in the narrative. who Who are you looking at um, for inspiration these days? Mm. That's a good question because I've seen you walk into a room. We were at uh, Rachel Rachel's uh, uh, ROI right, summit. Yes. I've seen you walk into a room and the place explodes and people go crazy and <laughs> people know, you know, they know your story. So I always like to know who, who those types of people are looking at. Mm. One person who comes to mind, so I love Issa Rae. Yes. Um, I just love what she's done. I remember her being on YouTube with Awkward Black Girl yeah. way oh, back I in the, the very beginning. Um, so just to see what she's done with her career mm -hmm. is incredible and how she's really creating other entities related. Yeah. Uh, Elaine Welteroth is seems yes, really dope. Yes, yeah. Um, so I love watching her career. And because I mentioned fashion, you know, being on uh, in that realm and then mm -hmm. now just thought leader and really mm -hmm. sharing in real time the mm -hmm. lessons. Um, let me see is inspiring me i mean that those two women are incredible yeah, yeah that's great yeah i'm looking at uh bozma yes always, we were just talking about her book yes she makes me like she just i feel like timid around her i, I don't Ooh, i'm not used to I that still haven't met her. i don't oh. mean like i feel <laughs> like shy around her. i mean right, like right, she yeah. makes me look like a timid person oh. as outspoken as i am because she is just like boom i'm here Oh, wow. I'm fabulous. You're yes. fabulous. We're all fabulous. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it has so much uh, uh, substance to it. You know? mm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing her speak at Afrotech years ago, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I used to woman? hear it, right? I used to hear from my colleagues, from different people, oh, Bozma spoke, and it was amazing. And I thought, oh, well, you know, you know, a lot of flash, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah, she's waking up the room, right? Mm -hmm. And then I got to interview her at Lesbians Who Tech, and I got to meet her, and she she knew very little about my story. I knew very little about hers, and we got to know each other, and we were both, like, game recognized game. Like, it was wow. on, and now I'm like, we need your sunshine we need your energy in this world, mm -hmm. uh, as I think of a few people, yeah. Well, you talked about... Um, coaches and leveling up i i talked about this with amy porterfield when she was on do you think that that's like one of the secrets to rich people getting richer Ooh, yes yeah um i mean it is that who are you in proximity with mm -hmm. and even if you were not born into certain circles, even if you didn't go to certain schools, the cheat code is the internet these days. Mm. And my very first person I called a mentor, they didn't even know I existed because they were my virtual mentor. Yeah. I listened to every podcast they were on. I watched every YouTube video they had. I was on their email list. And I just reverse engineered what they were talking about. Yeah. But I also like read between the lines of yeah. what is their mindset? Where is their heart? What's their journey been? Uh, so that yeah. to me is like from day one. Like if you're not, if, if you're, if there's no way to pay for a mastermind, to be in closer mm -hmm. proximity, to be in, uh, you know, their program or whatever it is, just adopt them as a virtual mentor. Yes, you have to. I, that was Oprah for me. Mm. That that looking at what she's doing, not necessarily exactly what she's saying, because I could see the I could see the pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. And then it was uh, partially Brad Feld, who r wrote several books about venture capital, and I was lucky enough to now be in his latest book, oh, uh, Startup wow. Communities. Yeah, that, that was me sitting at home with no money 
and not feeling sorry for myself. It was very important. I'm saying this to everybody. It was me saying every day I'm going to learn something and I'm going to learn from his books. Even if I can't afford his books, I'm going to go read it at the, at the store, mm-hmm. at the library. And I, would, I did that. And there were so many people who I either read their book or I watched their videos on YouTube who are now investors in my fund or some other type of person that I'm really interacting with. And I also think it's not just like, just like Issa says, it's not just go find Issa Rae in the middle of the mix. Go find the people who are one step ahead of you or in it with you. Yes. And collaborate with them. Have a monthly, I say Red Lobster, but wherever. <laughs> you know, have a monthly meeting. You meet them biscuits? Oh, they're so good. Cheddar biscuits. <laughs> cheddar biscuits are so yes. good. They sell the box at Costco. You they can make do? it at home yourself what? sometimes. Wow, mm-hmm. okay. So, get, but have, have a standing meeting with a group of people because what I hear sometimes and I hear it a lot so I, I, I'm being a little less nice about it and polite about it these days but I hear founders or aspiring entrepreneurs etc there are a lot of excuses and a lot of this is being done to me and I can't get anywhere because xyz and we, I, I feel like you know we, we kind of have the same tools at our disposal And the good thing about it is, like, what you thought about your circumstances yesterday does not have to be what you think about your circumstances today. You can shake that off, and you can move forward if you have that hunger in you, right? And so one of the things is if you're repurposing, right? If you can't raise capital, think of it like maybe I'm meant to bootstrap. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's meant to be my story. If I can't get in touch with the person, I've been reaching out to this person, um, for weeks and they won't answer my call maybe it's because you are supposed to have 10 mentors that you don't know yet mm-hmm. who, they mentor in a box who are supposed to speak to you like Oprah did <laughs> like Oprah spoke to me when I was on a blow up bed in Pearland wow. and reading her book and I would read her book uh, what I know for sure mm. so I'd read that book and then when I started the fund a couple years later I read the book again, and it has a different meaning. Mm. And then when I got my first million, a couple mm-hmm. years later, I read the book again, and it had a new meaning. Yes. And it, it, and it hit me the right way. It was supposed to, like, oh, that's what she was talking about. And, at, and it happens all the time, mm-hmm. you know? So repurpose that. Please don't sit in that complacency and that woe is me. Yeah. Because no one, here's what I say, no one's coming to save us. That part. Right? It's a hard truth, but it it could be the thing that changes everything for you. Absolutely. What do you want people to know about having money? Oh. Oh. What I want people to know about having money is it's not as great as you think it is. Like, what does that mean? I spent a lot of time thinking it was the destination and forgetting it's a tool. It is called currency for a reason. It's a current like water. It's supposed to flow, it's supposed to move. And our role is to see, is the money gonna multiply more here or over here? Mm. And in that way, it's a game and it gives a lightness to it. It's not, I need to make this money so I can hold it and hold it forever near and dear to me. Nah, you acquire it here and then you, repurpose it over here and it multiplies more over here and then you can reinvest over here. So I would have, uh, I think that relationship of it not being a destination, but it be really being a tool. Mm. And that's where the vision comes in of what life are you creating? And when we, when we both, uh, before we knew how to make money, that type of money, we would hear people say something like that, right? We would hear that money isn't everything. And I used to say, let me find out. <laughs> Like, right? I'll it. tell you when I get prove there. It, yeah. <laughs> but so it can be. Do you think there's anything that we can say to people mm. to do that? Or do you think they it just has to be something that you get when you get it? Because what I'm what I'm trying yeah. to do is help people uh, avoid pitfalls and, and get there. Like you say, collapse time. Mm. I love that term. Like I, I, I'm trying to get it so where people can see the breadcrumbs of how you get it, of course. Mm-hmm. But more importantly... Is it the thing that you thought it was so that you're not making this your whole life mission when when actually you you probably have more wealth in life today yes. than you ever realized? You have people around you 
who you might reach the million dollars, but they may not be there when you get there. And you missed out on them because you were looking this way. Yes. I think what helped me is understanding there are three forms of capital. And I learned this from Hodge Fleming's. One is social capital, one is intellectual capital, and one is money capital. And I think we are usually really focused on the money capital, but we forget there are people with way less money, but way more social capital. Mm. And they're the ones who are whatever's important to you. They're on the red carpet or they're vacationing in the top hotel because they know the owner. That's right. Or they are hanging out with the dopest people, having a blast, and everything's paid for because they're our homies. Mm -hmm. Like, so social capital is so, it's, it's, there is not a dollar amount you can put on that. There's no ceiling you can put on that. Intellectual capital. That feeds this world is the curiosity, being able to have conversations like this. It is the unique thing we have as humans is that oral tradition. Mm -hmm. The fact that I can tell you, here's how I did it, Arlen, don't do this, like what you're doing with this podcast. And then the next generation can go further and faster than we did. That is our uniqueness as humans. That's intellectual capital. Yeah. Again, priceless. So we put so much focus on one form of capital when these other two, if you could talk the talk, you could get, you could get a lot more than somebody with more money who can't talk the talk. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah, so I think... Yeah, I mean, that's huge. That's why I say if you don't have money, but money attracts money, you become money. Mm. And that's what I did in 2015. I, I did it over a few years prior by learning everything I could about this topic of venture capital, everything I could at the time. And then when I found myself in a room with millionaires... I had things that they didn't have. I had this education that they didn't have because they didn't have the time or you know ne need to learn it. Mm -hmm. So when they had questions, they had all the money in the world sitting in their bank, but they didn't have the answer. And I mm -hmm. rolled up with the answer, mm -hmm. and they said, well, let's share the money with you so I can just keep proximity with you. Mm -hmm. When I asked Mark Cuban, why did you invest six million dollars in backstage capital when you don't like investing in other people's funds because you like direct directly investing without f without uh, missing a beat he said because you you'll be in rooms I'll never be in mm. that's the thing he is worth about six billion in a given day right and when he invested six million in me you know originally I probably was worth less than a million net worth but beca because wow. of all that work I put in, the intellectual and the social capital, yes. I'm at the right place at the right time, and I have something he doesn't have. Mm -hmm. And he knows it, and he recognizes that. And I think that most people can put themselves in that position. I love how you're saying that because most people are saying, well, I'll make it when I make the million. My first million dollars, I'll make it but you might already have it in other ways. Yes. And I think it goes back to wherever you go, there you are. Mm -hmm. I made my first million and I was still so caught up in the mindset I had had for most of my life, which was I've got to grind, I've got to work all the time, I've got to hit the goals, I've got to, I didn't even enjoy what I had created. The freedom, the time freedom I had, I filled it up with things because I, I was I didn't work on my mindset. Mm -hmm. I didn't work on what do I what's really important, what does living really look like? Okay, so someone has been watching. I know there are people watching the entire interview. Shout out to y'all. Where do they find you? Now we know that you're matchmaking, you're gonna come to me first. <laughs> Now they can come to you, but it's gonna be a lot of work, you know. Yeah, you um, bet, you but bet. how do people find you on social or yeah. your website? I'm, I'm most active on Instagram, so just my name, Danielle Leslie, uh, or you can go to daniellelesley.com or coursefromscratch.com. Yeah, very cool, very cool. And is there something that uh, can give somebody an edge if they're trying to match make with you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant in life with business. Yeah. With the first million. Oh, we go back to uh, that. <laughs> That's a good one. Like, Ooh. okay, like for instance, yes. like do you have like a favorite song or favorite movie and they can go and take something from that? We don't want any stalkers, but we just, you know, mm -hmm. we want somebody thinking. I'll give you a couple books. Okay. So, um, well, one movie is... She's fancy. She'll go with the books, okay. 
<laughs> I mean, everything, everywhere, all at once. I love hearing about people's perspectives of that film. So the, the movie. The yeah, movie. Yes. For books, if you read any Dr. Joe Dispenza, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself or Becoming Supernatural, uh, anything around habit formation, I think it's important for people who are grounded. So Atomic Habits, yeah. um, Power of Habit. Yeah, so I think those will give uh -huh. a good insight into a little bit of what I'm about. Yeah, and, and if you don't, important. if you're like, oh, I don't want to read a book, just take yourself out the running. Uh, yeah, do an audiobook. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like if, but yeah, but you're if right. You say, if you're not even going to listen to a book, like, then, If you won't oh, listen no. to a book, Need not take apply. yourself out of it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got it. We're going to check in at some point. We'll yes. do like a check-in. Okay. Um, and we'll see. Have you ever done like speed dating? I haven't. Yeah. I just got on um, Hinge. Yeah. Because a friend of mine inspired me because she's doing intentional dating. Okay. And so I am finally realizing I have never done intentional dating. Like, I've never dated intentionally. Oh. I thought I was, but your girl was getting swept up. Oh. Like, she wasn't doing it. <laughs> so that's been really fun. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you, like, very specifically say, no, I'm looking for exactly. someone I'm going And I'm out going on. to date for, date. you know, three yeah. to six months. Yeah. Not get, like, you know, I go to zero to 1,000 real quick. Oh, yeah. So. Well, I'm a lesbian, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call it like uh, you hauling for nothing. <laughs> like so one to one to a thousand. Okay, yeah. So that's been good. Intentional dating. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start start a, a dating site called Unhinged. Ooh, <laughs> I love that. Yes, yes. I mean, <laughs> LA. I can get started right here locally. <laughs> <laughs> it's that. been awesome talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. I'm so excited to see what people say about this episode mm. because I just think that there are so many people who can relate to you and mm. um, and ho I hope they learn from you too. There's some people gonna, who want to take your course. Uh, and how do they do that? Is that DanielleLeslie.com? Yeah, if they go to CourseFromScratch.com. CourseFromScratch.com. Mm -hmm. Or DanielleLeslie.com. Okay, but, excellent. Yes. All right, cool. Thank yeah. you. All right, thanks so much.